Hey comic book community, Lombok Self Affair here. Happy Thanksgiving 2002. I went to my hometown. I visited maybe one, two, three, four, five different LCSs in that area. It has really ballooned since I lived there in terms of the, the number of comic book stores. And so this is generally in the vicinity of Rochester, New York. So I'm gonna spotlight some LCSs, which is local comic shops. If you're not familiar with the lingo, I'm going to uh, show you a little picture of the of the place and show you what I picked up. I'm really excited about what I found. I always find good books when I go to Rochester once or twice a year. And uh, yeah, so here is what I found this Thanksgiving break. Finding comics in unlikely places, a flea market, you never know what you're gonna find. So I was able to pick up Far Sector for five bucks. So as you saw, I, the first place I went to was killing some time before an LCS opened in Charlotte. And uh, I went to this place that was a flea market. It had another rummage store next to it. A lot of crap, a lot of crap. But I did find a box, a short box of DC Comics, uh, modern books. And they had uh, Far Sector 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. And I just fast forwarded it to the front. I was like, do they have one? one? which I never picked up issue number one, and they did. So I picked up Far Sector number one, first print for five bucks. So this is a book I've had on my mind. My comic book reading club, we read this book a couple months ago, so I've been wanting to pick up the first issue. I could have picked up the whole run for $5 each, but I didn't think that was worth it, to be quite honest. I just wanted the key first issue. So Far Sector number one. By the time I was done with that uh, storefront flea market, rummage store. Uh, across the street, the All Heroes Comics was open. So All Heroes Comics, really cool place, small, but they jam pack a lot of back issues in there. So if you are in the Rochester area, this is uh, on sort of the edge. It's a little bit of a drive, but not too much. So I always find some good things there. Uh, one of the things I was really excited to find, and, and everything was pretty affordable, the guys are really great there that work there, is uh, Season Beatings number one. Pick this up for Five fifty. Uh, it is near mint. Everything's really nice condition. This is the variant cover, the Kang cover that everyone was clamoring over when Loki was out. I saw this on walls at conventions. So to find this in a pile, so they have the short boxes and then they have random piles of books. And this was just in a random pile. So I happened to find it. I was like, I'll take that. Uh, cool Kang cover. It's got a little skinny neck going on here, but uh, Season Beatings number one, the variant cover. Uh, it is a, a one shot. I haven't even opened it to read it. Also in a pile that a book I have been looking for is Stan Lee meets the Silver Surfer number one. $8. I thought that was a really great cover. This is Mike Waringo, Ringo cover. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I'm Anything with Stan Lee. They had the Doctor Strange one for about eight or 10 bucks. I didn't want that. This is a cool cover. I'm a big Silver Surfer fan, big Stan Lee fan. So really cool book to have there. Added that to my pile. Something else I had never found before, but I, I always look at the cosmic stuff in any short box that I can find or long box. Uh, so I found the second print to infinity number one. Found this for four bucks, five bucks. Now, second printing, different cover, Jim Chung. I'd never seen this before, so I snagged it. I thought it might be valuable. Uh, I didn't look on eBay. It is about a $5 book, which is fine. Uh, this is an under the radar second print, to be quite honest. So I'm, I'm surprised people aren't talking about this book, but uh, I snagged it. I'm happy about it. I'm kind of a completionist with all of my cosmic stuff. So this really fits the bill. Also there, I picked up a couple of Avengers Children's Crusade books. On the cheap, they were four and five dollars each. Uh, this is issue number three and issue number five. It's the only two they had in stock. Also for five bucks, I was surprised I found this for five bucks. And again, it's near mint. Nova number one for Sam Alexander. Well, no, not quite the first Sam Alexander, but it is the first Sam Alexander series. So depending on the speculation and what Marvel does with Nova, if they do a Nova, there's a lot of talk about them doing a Marvel uh, feature, like a one shot like they did with Guardians uh, just this past week. So uh, yeah, Nova number one, really cool Ed McGinnis cover. And last but not least at this shop, I picked up the variant and the regular cover of Fantastic Four number one. So this is the Scotty Young. So in this, I bought this for six bucks. And it's not just the first issue. It is also bundled in there for some reason. They combined uh, the first issue, cover A, and the Scotty Young cover. So let me just take this out for anyone who wants to see it. So the Scotty Young and then the Mark Bagley cover A. 
This Scotty Young book goes for some money. His Galactus uh, or baby covers, uh, his Galactus ones are ones that go for 20, 30, maybe even more. So I was happy to find this and this for, for six bucks combined. So it was a win in my book. I couldn't stay too much longer. My dad was in the car. We were kind of putzing around town and he's like, why don't we go check out a shop that you want? But uh, he didn't come in. So uh, I'm in the shop, I'm trying to hunt, but I'm also not trying to make him wait. So this is what I found in about 20 minutes. So uh, I did some damage. I was like, okay, I'll go away. Elvis was like 30 some odd dollars for all the books I just showed. Uh, so that was my first day of hunting. My second day of hunting was a Wednesday, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and so I had a couple comic shops on my radar to check out. One was in Penfield called Wonderland Comics, and it also has some science uh, banner to it. There's some science implications to what they do, uh, and I think that's just for the kids on the side, uh, but mostly it's a comic shop. They have long rows of long boxes uh, and file cabinets, and they have things behind the counter, and for some of the key issues, you have to go up and ask. You're like, do you have this? And they look in the back and they, they they pull out the early Avengers you have or the early FF that they have. So most of this is hunting in the bins, but there was one book they had behind the counter. I asked what early Avengers they had and they showed it to me. So I'll show you which one I picked up. But first, uh, these were all in the bins. I found a really cheap but nice near mint minus copy of West Coast Avengers 48, 45. Bought this for $8. Oh, no, sorry, $38. Uh, nice copy. Uh, really awesome book. Uh, I think I own another nice copy I bought at Baltimore Comic Con. So uh, restocking in, in this Vision character, uh, the White Vision. So Vision Quest with Disney Plus, if they uh, continue to move forward with that and, and bringing back the White Vision. This book will rise again. Uh, it is down, it is in a low. I think 38 was a really affordable price for it, especially the condition. Also picked up a couple key comics uh, related to Scarlet Witch. Uh, I don't believe she's dead. I think she's around there somewhere. I think her storyline, they've invested a lot to build up the world of Wanda. So there is more to come with that. So it doesn't hurt to pick those keys up, including Avengers 185. Picked that up for $18. And 187, I picked this up for $18. This book, I've seen people have it so overpriced. I saw this, so keep in mind, I bought this for $18. I saw this on a wall for like 50, 60, $70 later this day, that same day. So uh, I was happy I picked it up for $18. Did I get a steal? I don't know. I think I paid about market price. Also, in the bins uh, was the only Russell Dowderman character variant book that I did not have, and that is X-Men number one from 2019. Uh, it is a little different than his current uh, style, where he has them kind of flowing in like a little swoop. He, this is Jean Grey in a, a circle, as you can see, all the costumes. I don't love the shading of this co cover. I don't like the coloring of it. Um, it's not my favorite of his character variants, but I'm a completionist. I do like Jean Grey. I love Dark Phoenix. Uh, Dark Phoenix is back there. And I love Dar uh, Russell Dodderman's artwork. So this was a no brainer and it's six bucks. This was a ratio, I believe. So I was happy to find that for affordable price. Two more at Wonderland. So I also picked up in the bins Avengers, it's giant size special number two. This has the first appearance of a reiteration of Kang. So uh, if if anything happens with Kang uh, in Ant-Man or further down the road, if he becomes the big baddie, uh, then uh, if, if one of those iterations that's in here uh, comes to pass, this is a good spec book, but it's also just a really nice Silver Age book, a nice cover. Uh, this is a really nice condition book from the, I guess, I guess uh, 60s. Uh, late 60s, it was 25 cents for a square bound book, but I'm, that was a lot of money back then. Hard to think of, but I paid $25 this past week. It's got the Avengers versus each other. And then going up, see what else they had at the wall. I didn't see anything I needed on the wall, but then I said, what early Avengers do you have? And then they have this, Avengers 16. Uh, this is, I bought this for $100. I feel like it's in decent condition. It, it, it definitely has some wear, but it's the new team. And if I'm not mistaken, it has the third appearance of Kang, early, early Kang appearance. So I think I have the first, second, and third appearance of Kang now. So I didn't buy it for the Kang. I bought it uh, mostly because it is a landmark issue. It is a new team. It's got Avengers Assemble on the cover. 
classic Avengers book. And whenever I look at Avengers books, at uh, Silver Age Avengers books, this one is always missing. So people are always picking this book up, I think. So I was happy to pick this one up uh, for a decent price. Last store on my purchasing haul here was Rhinos Comics and Collectibles. Uh, and that is on the outskirts of Rochester in Greece uh, area, if I'm not mistaken. So it was new comic book day. So I picked up this awesome variant, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 14. I actually picked up another one through Whatnot from Infinity Flux in Tennessee uh, that same night. So I have two, uh, and actually my LCS put one aside for me. So I have three of these. I just love this cover, this Alex Malev cover, Malev, however you say his name. And uh, this Chasm, this new character, first variant cover with him, other than the Pat Gleason first appearance issue, uh, which is, uh, a little muddled in terms of the design of it, but this is a I, this is a classic cover in my mind. So I, I wanted to pick it up. I love the colors. I love the character design. We'll see what they do with him in Dark Web. So I picked that up. Also, usually so, and, and I should say usually this store uh, has great discounts. So you go up to the register, you type in your name because you're registered there, and I was registered there even though I'm out of town by now, um, and usually you get like a 10% discount on this and a 30% discount on that. That didn't happen this time. I was a little disappointed, but I felt I, felt I found some good books. Um, they did have things that were overpriced. They had some very overpriced books. On the wall, they had an X-Men 4, first appearance of Omega Red for, what was it, $150 or something like that? Uh, and, and I put that on Instagram. I, I don't wanna shame them. They are a great store. I found some great deals, but some of their prices were crazy. But that's the way it is with a lot of stores. Sometimes things are priced very reasonable, and sometimes they have their outliers where it's like, you need to adjust that price. That is not gonna sell. And if it sells for that price, Shame on everybody, the seller and the buyer. Uh, but anyway, I found a really nice copy of Spider-Man Adventures 8 for 10 bucks. And it is a new stand, which I think is even more alluring. I might not have bought this if it was uh, just the regular cover. I do like this color cover. Is this Alex Soviak? Yep. I've had this book several different times. It is probably near mint minus, but happy to have it back in the collection. Also there for $3 each, I picked up Sinister Spider-Man 2, Chris Bacalo, uh, Bacalo of covers and art too, I think. Yeah, number three, which I don't like this cover. This is probably his worst cover, uh, but I wanted to get the whole mini series. I have issue number one already. So this is, that was two, this is three. Uh, and I can't tell what the heck's going on here. And issue number four, we got a fat venom. So for three bucks each, why not? I think they're harder to find. Uh, also picked up, Avengers 78. This is the second man ape, Mbaku. I bought this for $18 in fine condition. I thought that was a really great price, especially given his prominence in, in Wakanda forever. We don't know uh, what will happen with this character, but I think he's sticking around. So uh, nice cover there. This is a book I've wanted for a while, and it was 30 bucks. Avengers 100. Barry Windsor Smith artwork. I'm a big Barry Windsor Smith fan. I uh, don't have a whole lot of extra books I'm buying from him because I have most of his catalog of things, but this is a landmark issue. Look at that, the border there. We got the writing on top and bottom, it's sort of classic Avengers in that time period in the, gosh, probably the early 70s, but it's basically every character, every Avenger appears in this book. And then last but not least, I have a copy of this already, but I wanted to pick this one up for $25. They say it's VF. I doubt it is. I think it might be a little rougher. Uh, picked up Marvel 2-in-1 Annual number 2. It is the death of Thanos. Uh, it is Adam Warlock coming back, but just in his ethereal uh, form, like as, as a specter, and he kind of kills Thanos from Soul World. So it, it is sort of a landmark issue. And this might be the first appearance of of all of the Infinity Gems. I could be wrong. I think this lays the groundwork for Infinity Gauntlet uh, that happens 10, 20 some odd years later, but uh, still really cool book. I love this book. It, it's my sweet spot of, of collecting. So, uh, so yeah, that is what I found. It's not quite a Black Friday haul. I did my shopping before Black Friday, but I am back. I This this like a lot of comics, a lot of comics. I could have done some more damage, I didn't feel like hunting anymore. And I actually came back from my travels early, a day early, just because I got bored. Um, and I was there for an extra day 
than I would normally. So I cut my time sh a little short, but basically my, my average time and pick these up. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this haul. Anyone that is in Rochester or likes any of these stores, put, put that in the comments down below. Let me know your go-to. Let me know your LCS in that area. My LCS was Collector's Choice in Brockport, uh, and I didn't find anything there uh, this time, but you, you never know. So uh, I, I, I did some hunting. This is what I found, and that's my story. So thanks for watching. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, however you chose to celebrate it, and uh, here we go in the holiday season. So looking forward to seeing you at the next video. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.